Thanks for joining today. I'm Mike Chase with AirSpring. This is going to be a agent training on popular SD-WAN use cases and customer case studies. What are we actually seeing out in the field as this wildly popular technology has been deployed to sites for customers worldwide? What exactly does it do? What benefits does it bring? And when the rubber meets the road, how exactly are people using this? Some of those scenarios are very exciting. We're going to illustrate some of those today. Thanks for joining. First off, I'll introduce myself as myself. I'm Mike Chase. Um, been in the industry for a while. Uh, worked in data centers most of my life. Uh, do get me involved with your customers. Uh, I'm the Senior Vice President for the Solutions Engineering Team, which is our pre-sales team. Love to meet new people, usually on the road every week. Been doing a lot of the World Air Spring uh, tour and, and presentation for a lot of the agencies and, and people out there. Uh, if you haven't been involved in one of those, get a hold of either Shane Speakman, our VP of Channel, or Ron McNabb, uh, who's my peer, who's the SVP of Sales. Uh, but that's been very exciting. But get me involved with your customers because, you know, I've worked across the industry in VARs and data centers and cloud and telecom and enterprise companies like Broadcom, you know, Wells Fargo Experian. So the conversation is always very lively because I can really identify with their pain and all the different challenges that they're having. And uh, it's a very good conversation, not just to introduce AirSpring's products, but uh, to help them solve some of the problems they have and become a trusted advisor. Uh, I'm very easy to reach, lightning fast. You'll always get a response within the same day if you email me, mike.chase at airspring.com or uh, WhatsApp to my cell phone. A little hard, of course, when I'm in meetings to, to get back to you on the phone or, or voicemails, but these two methods, you'll find them extremely fast. I'm also always on the Wi-Fi on the plane. So here to help you, always at your service, and uh, we've got a great team. So who's AirSpring? Uh, founded in 2001 by the Lonstein brothers, Avi, Daniel, and David. Um, now, I've cashed out a few companies, so I've got to be candid. These are solid guys. Uh, it's not that, you know, every carrier is perfect. We're not. Um, mistakes happen, but these are guys that are working shoulder to shoulder with us every day to make this company great. Um, you know, when issues come up, we've got an escalation list that goes all the way up to our CEO. Under their leadership, we're privately held, debt-free carrier. I, I don't know of any other carriers who can make that claim. Our headquarters is in northern Los Angeles and Van Nuys, California specifically, with staff throughout the United States, and we have satellite offices uh, to handle different operational uh, capabilities in Manila, in the Philippines, about 60, 70 people there, and about 20 people in Pune, India. We're a CLAC, or competitive local exchange carrier in all 50 states. So we have our own network, but the, the real magic of AirSpring is we're an aggregating carrier. We're connected to over 30 other carriers out there in our super pops located in Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, and New York. And that's huge because then you get the ability to you know, choose from all these solutions, and that makes us a one-stop shop. So you can mix up all these different carriers, all these different circuits, all these different technologies, but do it through one quote tool, one bill, one team to support you so you're not on hold with 20 or 30 different carriers. Um, on the voice side, we're huge. We do hosted phones, call center solutions, and also SIP trunks. Today we're terminating uh, north of 4 billion calls a month. We have the ability to do you know, more than twice that, around 9 billion a month. That means that every single person on the planet could make at least one phone call through AirSpring every single month. That's huge. Uh, our rates are extremely competitive, and if you're not using us for any of our voice services, you should definitely check us out. We're also known for being the guys who have the 100% phone, meaning that a lot of people are out there selling phones. A lot of the features are very similar, but we get a lot of the doctors and lawyers and the people who want to make sure that that phone call is absolutely pristine. And we can do that because we're not just putting in a phone and then praying that it gets over the Internet to the, you know, the, the voice platform. We can put in, you know, we do a truck roll, put the phones in, we do the router, the switch, the circuit, all the way up to the platform. So there really is one throat to choke and nobody else to blame. And when you're a doctor or a lawyer, one word in a conversation that you can't hear can dramatically change your case or dramatically change your, uh, you know, diagnosis for one of your patients. So when it really matters, you go with AirSpring. Um, across those 30 carriers, we're typically in the top five. So we bring that, you know, presence and that spend and the integrated support that we get with those 30 carriers, and we bring that to bear on your behalf. Um, meanwhile, I'm not the only bright guy on the team. There's a lot of smart people rolling around uh, AirSpring that you can leverage who are certified both in routing and switching as well as we send a lot of guys to the SIP school online training in the UK. So uh, that really is great because when you're dealing with so many different technologies and voice and data and different things, you know you got the experts on hand to deal with it. This is a picture of headquarters. So if you're ever in town, you know, if you fly into LAX, there's an LAX flyaway bus that operates 24 hours a day every 30 minutes, sometimes every 15 minutes. It's $9.75 one way. 
come on up. You know, even if you're in town, just meet with your customers. We'll, you know, send a pre-sales engineer with you to go meet. If you need a conference room, we can provide it. You just want to blow off some steam and have a game of uh, foosball or pool, yeah, we're always down for that too. But just know that we're at your service. We've got resources to bring to bear. And uh, if you happen to be in the Los Angeles area and need somewhere to hang out, get some air conditioning, get some internet, whatever you need, we're here to help you. We'll also take that show on the road, as we have with the World Air Spring and other presentations, and train your agents, train your customers, get those conversations going so that you can see what solutions can be put in. Now this year's been interesting, just like last year as well, a lot of acquisitions. That creates a lot of chaos. That means that, you know, the networks have to combine together, the support structures change, sometimes your, you know, your upstream agent changes as well. Um, our channel managers have typically been with our company for 10 plus years, as you know, so you're getting a lot of the same faces on every deal. It's always the case with a lot of other carriers, so Airspring really is a, a stable choice. Um, and watching some of those networks, you know, get together like Level 3 and CenturyLink was kind of like watching two elephants mate this year. So a um, little bit of downtime as they do that, and a lot of things change. So you don't have to deal with any of that. You get to choose from all these solutions, combine them in our super pops, and put it on one quote and one bill, and uh, know that your customer is going to get taken care of. And that's one of the great things is, you know, with, as SD-WAN has started to roll out, is that as you look at all these topologies, where you've got LTE, managed connectivity, multi-carrier, multi-mesh MPLS, uh, we can combine all those solutions together. And that's what really creates a, a very robust solution set from our team to design into any scenario that you've got with your customer. Um, unfortunately, too many carriers have, you know, a managed service, and they really become a victim of their own brand because they say, well, we're only going to support this much that the box can do. Uh, and, you know, typically here we're kind of the madmen, we'll do it all. That kind of relates to a concept called Airspring Unified Connectivity, where we can mix and match a lot of different things. Even simple things like SIP trunks that people have been doing with us for years, they'll say, oh, you know, I really should be encrypting this, and maybe they don't uh, want to do or know how to do, or maybe their platform can't do, uh, TLS, SRTP encryption for SIP. No problem. We can do IPsec tunnels uh, that are encrypted. We can also do SD-WAN. Uh, there's actually a guy I know who called up uh, a storage uh, company, and they had a whole different phone system. I mean, we'd love to sell Mars. They had a whole different phone system, and, you know, they're interested in SD-WAN. They've got 2,400 locations, and they're running their own IP PBX, and the phone quality is horrible between their sites. So, you know, we can combine all these solutions in our data center, and you can also take things like SD-WAN and overlay them uh, into situations, even when it's not an Airspring you know, phone system or product and enhance it dramatically and wind up with a really huge sale. We just did a, a deal a couple weeks ago, $94,000 a month in MRC for SD-WAN. So SD-WAN is flying off the shelf. It's being deployed to hundreds and hundreds of thousands, millions of sites actually worldwide uh, because it does some really amazing things. Last but not least, here's some of the logos of the 30 carriers we're connected to. And just know that from a support standpoint, the buck stops here. Uh, as you can see, Avi Lundstein, our um, CEO and my boss Daniel right above him, uh, these guys are going to take care of it, no question about it. So the thing I, I worry about is if there's an issue and you don't bring it to me, I, I really need you to bring it to me. I want all your feedback. So again, we're here to serve you guys. Let us know how we can do that best, uh, especially when we screw up or we don't deliver. You know, I want to score a 10 every time with you guys. So if there's something about any install that you didn't quite like, you know, shoot me an email, mike.chase.airspring.com. We'll take care of it. So why is SD-WAN so popular? So I put this slide in and boiled it down. These are the things that it does that people absolutely love because they couldn't do it with any network technology that ever existed before. Not the Cisco's, not the Juniper's, literally nothing. And here's some of the features. Bandwidth aggregation, number one. This means that all the circuits that you plug into the box, it can turn them into one big pipe. And it doesn't care if they're public or private circuits or if they're broadband or, you know, LTE or microwave or satellite or any of that stuff. It will figure it all out. And, of course, year over year, customers are constantly upgrading their bandwidth, and they don't want to do a forklift upgrade. Um, some carriers, in fact, when you make a change to the circuit at all, they require an entirely new circuit to get put in. So even if you're just dialing up the bandwidth a little bit, sometimes they, they won't just do that on the existing circuit. Now you don't have to have any interruptions. You can get a second, a third, a fourth circuit and just add to it. And as you're adding to it, not only are you getting more bandwidth, but you're getting a lot more redundancy as well. And that's where point number two comes in that we could never do before, and that is hypersonic two millisecond hitless failover and failback. When a circuit fails, uh, you don't even notice it. And just so you know, at our new headquarters, because we moved recently from one side of Van Nuys to the other, 
um, you know, the reality is that we don't we don't have any voice phone calls go down. Um, you know, if someone's watching a video, it doesn't it doesn't stutter. Um, even the most sensitive protocols and applications, uh, there's no impact to them whatsoever. And that's really huge because in the past, when you would fail over, people would notice. Uh, phone calls would drop. Things would stop. They'd have to restart applications. That doesn't happen. And when you're in a situation that was flapping, meaning it would fail over and fail back rapidly again and again and again, essentially you were down. So having that backup circuit didn't do you any good. Having a smart box that can not only fail over this quickly, but make sure that you know, you're immune from a lot of other network conditions like flapping is huge. The third reason is it's the first network technology on Earth to mitigate negative network conditions, things like packet loss, jitter, out-of-sequence packets. So even if you only had one circuit, and I have plenty of customers that do, and we'll show this in the use cases, you would order SD-WAN if, for example, you had a broadband circuit and it's so bad that you can't run voice over IP phones, and you'd really like to. So you can order SD-WAN, enhance that, and actually get that capability, and then still fail over to LTE and satellite and other technologies if there's literally nothing else that you can get in as a circuit. Um, the techniques it uses here for packet loss, it'll do packet duplication. It'll put on jitter buffers for the jitter, which is variability of latency. You know, a lot of applications can deal with a certain amount of delay, a certain amount of latency, but they don't want it to be all over the board. You know, if you look at a graph and it's all seesaw, that's what jitter is. It wants it to be consistent. Even if it's a little bit high, make it consistent, and that's what the box will do. Um, fourth point, IP mobility. Uh, you know, the days of ordering uh, internet and then having a circuit with IP addresses on it that are tied to that carrier and tied to that circuit are over. Um, with AirSpring Unified Connectivity and now adding SD-WAN to the mix, we can take a block of internet IP addresses and deliver those to you irregardless of who the carrier or the circuit or any of that is, and you can change those out in the future and still have the same public IP addresses for your website, for your firewall. Uh, you know, if you're doing VPN, whatever you need to do and not worry about that. And it also really uh, enhances disaster recovery. So when you get these customers, you know, disaster recovery has always been a hazy thing, trying to deal with it. And it always comes down to the IPs because when you change the IPs and you've got to change the DNS, it just has this cascading effect that creates chaos. So this has been an extremely popular feature for medical clients, banks, many others, particularly who are doing third-party VPN connections to, to others. And when they have to go change that, it's a huge bureaucratic, painful process, usually with dozens of vendors at a time, and they just don't want to do that. So just know we can do that. It's huge. A lot of scenarios where we can use it. Traffic backhaul is also big, and the ability to manipulate traffic, which is much granular than it ever has been in networking history. We can now get all the way down to an application. And this is huge, and we'll show this in one of the use cases where, you know, we can slice and dice your internet a hundred different ways. We can send it out the local link. We can backhaul it to your headquarters or your data center. We have a centralized firewall, or we can put a centralized firewall in our data center. Um, you know, we can backhaul, let's say, just the web traffic, which is pretty dangerous because we don't know where people are going, but then the high bandwidth stuff. Uh, and we did this at a fitness gym. Um, where basically, you know, if you're going to, the members were going to working out, and of course they're getting updates on their Android and their Apple phones, and that's a lot of bandwidth, and they're going to Hulu and Netflix and YouTube and watching live TV, and they're doing iTunes music and all these things. We're not worried about those services hacking the users, and so we didn't need to backhaul that to, you know, the central firewall. We just let that go out directly out the Internet links, and it really saved them a lot of money having to get a $100,000 firewall that could handle you know, the traffic from all their clubs or having to put a firewall at each one of the clubs, right? So traffic backhaul has really changed the network landscape as far as what you can do. And you can also manipulate traffic. We have an example here where, um, you know, when World Cup soccer was happening, a lot of people were going out, they want to watch it in high def, and that's 7 megs a user. So you get 10 people doing that at 70 megs. You can actually write a policy that says, okay, look, for all this streaming traffic, I want, you know, it's going to YouTube, I want it you know, downgraded to standard definition, in which case it'll only use one meg per user. So when you get 10 people doing that, it's the difference between 70 megs of bandwidth getting consumed on your network versus only 10. And then last but not least, irrespective of the phone system or the circuits or whatever the network is that the customer already has, because you're so used to going in, right, and trying to get those pieces away from them, SD-WAN is a different type of sale. You can literally show up to anyone who already has all these services from one of your competitors and get your foot in the door because you can enhance all of those services by selling them SD-WAN, which will enhance the overall end-to-end -end quality of experience, or what we call QOE. Now, how does it do all this wonderful stuff? Well, 
at the end of the day, when you're routing traffic in a network, it's, it's very much like driving a car and trying to get from point A to point B. Now, we all know the fastest way from, you know, the fastest uh, path from point A to point B is a straight line, but unless you're a bird, you know, probably not going to happen. So you've got to drive it, you've got to route it on the network that already exists. Um, and so if you think of maps, back in the day you had a paper map and you had to figure out if there were multiple ways to get from point A to point B, what those were, right? Then came Google Maps, and it automatically calculated, hey, this is the shortest path. You know, you should take it. But then Waze came out, and SD-WAN is really Waze for WAN, if you were to boil it down. Waze came out and said, look, that might be the shorter path physically, but there's so many detours and accidents and things going on that, you know, it's actually better if you went this other direction because it's using real-time information. And so when you boil SD-WAN down, this is the magic of it. It is basically the first time in networking history where you didn't have the network monitoring platform sitting over here and then the routers and the things that actually move the traffic sitting over there and the two were separate, right? Now they're in one box which has a couple of effects. One, you, have, you can actually use all that granular information that the network monitoring is collecting and actually do something about it, about how you route the packets whether you should turn on packet duplication or jitter buffers or corrective conditions, and that's what makes it magical. Um, and so since the movie Solo had come out recently, I compared that to Star Wars for any of you who are fans. If not, you know, tell this to your kids or your grandkids, you'll be, you'll be popular overnight. But essentially, the Millennium Falcon was the fastest because of the navigation computer. So think of network management as the navigation computer. What really is the fastest way to get from point A to point B? And so that was the magic of the Millennium Falcon. It wasn't the hyperdrive engine. Other ships had that as well. It was the fact that it had the best navigation computer to figure out based on the conditions at that time, you know, planets and things that don't move, as well as asteroids and ships moving around the galaxy that do move. At that exact moment, how can I jump to hyperspeed and get from point A to point B and take the path that's going to be shortest uh, through, you know, this mess we call the universe and the galaxy? So... That was the magic, and that, in a nutshell, is how SD-WAN does it. So use cases. First off, um, MPLS had been around for a long time, so when we introduced SD-WAN, we had customers who overlaid it, uh, you know, overlaid MPLS with SD-WAN. Now, there, there never was this SD-WAN versus MPLS. SD-WAN is a technology. It's software-defined, wide area networking. MPLS is just a circuit, okay? And that circuit is the highest quality circuit that you can feed SD-WAN, but SD-WAN will eat anything. All SD-WAN cares about is reachability. If whatever this path is, whatever carrier, whatever circuit, whether it's public or private, I don't care. If I can get from point A to point B, I'm going to build a encrypted tunnel over the top of this path and add it to my list of you know connection options between site A and B. And as many paths as there are, I'll create those tunnels and then I'll aggregate them together into one big pipe um, and, and get more bandwidth between those sites. So when you looked at MPLS, you know, it was a great technology. It was a little more expensive. And so vendors who couldn't do public and private circuits created this fake competition because they said, oh, replace all your MPLS with SD-WAN. Uh, they could only do Internet circuits. Our solution can use any circuit. Uh, we do it all the time. And so it, it really opens up the design uh, that you're able to roll out for the customer. And a lot of customers rolled this out for MPLS because if you think about it, MPLS was a private network, but it wasn't encrypted. And if you bought two MPLS circuits, your only choice was to have a primary and then a failover. You couldn't use them both at the same time. And then if you went to failover, uh, you know, the BGP routing protocol had to die, and sometimes that took 30, 60, or 90 seconds. It was a long time. And that impacted your applications. And then if you wanted visibility into the network, that was always extra. You know, we give it away for free with our Air NMS product, but a lot of people would charge for it or leave it to you as the customer to try to figure out how to monitor it. Fortunately, with SD-WAN, it takes care of all those issues. So when people would overlay MPLS with SD-WAN, um, and then they would augment it, because there were a lot of MPLS customers who did it for their voice and applications that really mattered to them, but they couldn't afford a second circuit, um, those customers would add Internet and then have both. And we were able to deliver their Internet service uh, and their voice service over the Internet or the MPLS circuit, and it would bond both of those together between the sites. And so it really filled in the gaps with MPLS, and there's quite a few customers who are using it. So as we say, it's more of a marriage than a divorce. Now, the next use case is traffic segmentation, and this one is huge. Um, you know, in the past, uh, networks were too flat, particularly when it came to the LAN. You know, in the LAN, you'll see things like VLANs and different things to segment 
uh, the network up for purposes of security or manageability, et cetera. But then the WAN was kind of like, well, I just have this WAN, and I have no way of carving it up, and I'm not crazy enough to go buy 20 circuits just to, you know, have one for guest Wi-Fi and one for corporate traffic and one for PCI compliant point of sale systems and all this other stuff. However, you don't have to do that now. You can, you know, much like how we run our MPLS networks where we can, can you know, isolate things and carve it up, SD-WAN does the same thing. So you can have, for example, all your corporate traffic separated from your guest Wi-Fi that you're, you're letting, you know, at all your offices or clubs or whatever you've got. Um, you can keep your point of sale system separate. Now this is huge because if you remember back in the day, everybody from Home Depot to, you know, TJ Maxx, all these guys got hacked because they had everything in one flat network in their LAN and their WAN. You know, the IP security cameras, the point of sale systems, the corporate LAN, all this was blended together and that led to, you know, very negative um, security ramifications that affected their company and affected their stock as well. Some companies went out of business, others just were, you know, greatly impacted by it, not just by, you know, the, the loss of face, but then the lawsuits that came from it as well. So just know we can do traffic segmentation and backhaul, and that's really huge. And that helps us with our next scenario, which is very popular as well, which is centralized internet, meaning that sometimes you don't want to put a firewall at every single site. You either want to put one up in our data center or put one in your data center or use the one that you've got at the, the headquarters, and we can do that. And what's really great about this now, which was very difficult to do with prior routing technology, is it's very easy to have uh, secondary or even tertiary sites. So if connectivity to the primary firewall, wherever it's located, goes down, instantly all internet traffic can be routed to the secondary site where there's another firewall and we can guarantee that all that filtering, whether it's web filtering or malware protection or, um, you know, now we actually include with the firewalls that, that we sell, um, DPI SSL, which does encrypted traffic, which is 60% of the internet traffic. So a lot of people have a firewall today of three years or older. Sell them a firewall because it's not even looking at 60% of the traffic. DPI SSL wasn't used years ago. You know, as recently as two, three years ago, a lot of people didn't have it. A lot of people still don't have it. So they think that, you know, this brick with flashing lights they call a firewall is protecting them. It's not. The other thing we do is a sandbox that protects against zero-day threats. But we can put these in different locations, whether it's our data centers or customers' data centers, and have those fail over automatically, um, while at the same time maintaining the priority of traffic for voice and other things. Um, if they're using a hosted provider that's not AirSpring, it needs to go out to the Internet. So we still prioritize that all the way across the infrastructure, which is really, uh, really useful. Also, we can provide uh, AirSpring IP addresses to any of those locations, and those will never change, even when they change out the carrier or the circuit or whatnot. Um, also, if they're using a cloud provider, uh, those IPs can be used up in the cloud. Otherwise, it's very hard to get Amazon and Azure to do BGP, and you've got to own your own IPs and all this stuff. You normally you get stuck with using their IPs. And so cloud connectivity is a very big deal as well. Um, I actually used to own a cloud company. I was hosting for Morgan Stanley, Bank of England, and others doing virtual servers and desktops. And unfortunately, you know, only the big guys get a private link uh, to the cloud. The rest of, of I would say, 99% of the customers just use a point-to-point -point IPsec VPN tunnel, and that does nothing to enhance the traffic to and from the cloud, which, which is where a lot of the resources are running these days. Um, you know, typically, that would either be a, a VPN connection directly from each site, as shown on the left here, uh, or they would just, you know, do a connection from headquarters, and everybody had to backhaul to headquarters, which, you know, was a penalty of some delay, et cetera, and then up to the cloud. Now, with SD-WAN, you can deploy it to the cloud, and then it just looks like any of your other offices. Um, it's full mesh to all your offices. They have a direct connection to it. It's much more stable and, and phenomenally easier to configure than point-to-point -point, uh, IPsec VPN, and it will enhance all the traffic to and from the cloud. Uh, up to voice quality. So there's a lot of things that get hosted in the cloud, uh, files and so forth, where it can literally take, you know, we had one scenario where it took 134 seconds to transfer a 50 meg file to and from the cloud versus 13 seconds when SD-WAN was deployed. So that's a 10x improvement. And if you have to do a certain transaction, you know, with your cloud servers multiple times a day, multiple times per employee, um, you're wasting a lot of time and a lot of payroll money. So almost every customer you have today is connected to the cloud you need to mention SD-WAN to them. This is the way to get connected to the cloud. If they're doing anything else, they're wasting their time. This will scale up to two gigabits per second. If you get one of those clients who goes beyond that, which is great, we've got options that can scale through private connect connections and virtual cross connects up to 100 gigabits per second. So just let us know um, when you do that. But you've got to talk to them about SD-WAN. It's huge. 
Um, what happens is, particularly with AWS and Azure, there's already a VeloCloud virtual appliance that's up in the marketplace. Okay, so they'll spin that up. On Azure, it's $217 a month for the CPU, memory, disk, all the resources that virtual machine's going to need. It's a pre-built template, so it comes right up. Same with AWS, $145 a month. And then you come to us for a license. We license it, add it to the customer's portal where they'll see the cloud and all the rest of their offices. It just looks like another office, frankly. And they're up. So very, very easy to deploy, very quick, scales to 2 gigabits per second. And uh, it really is the way to get connected. If they're, doing, if they're still doing point-to-point -point IPsec VPN, that's a horrible, horrible way. I mean, I, I know it's quick and it's cheap. I mean, it's not that cheap. Even Amazon's charging for their point-to-point -point IPsec VPN tunnels now, which I think is ridiculous. But the reality is this is the best way to get connected because the other way is not improving the traffic whatsoever. Now, the other use case we see a lot is as soon as you get SD-WAN in, customers want to talk about security and what are their options. Now, most of my competitors offer, you know, one or two options, maybe two or three options. We offer all the options, really, that are out there. And that is, number one, you can bring your own firewall. Not a problem. You can plug it into a port on the back of the VeloCloud box, um, and we can give it a public IP address that will stay with it, and off you go. Um, when hurricanes hit and fires hit, people are literally picking up their SD-WAN box and their firewall, flying it, driving it somewhere else, plugging it in into the Internet, you know, the front end port of the Velo plugging it back into the Internet, and as soon as it came back up anywhere on the Internet, uh, it was live again, and it had the same IP addresses, public IPs that was delivering to that firewall. It's sticky to the box. You could fly it to Brazil, plug it in, you'd have the same IPs, wouldn't have to change configuration of your firewall at all. Or in the case of the guy who didn't make it to the building in time and it burned down, he called us up, and he had one of his data centers uh, you know, in another state already online with SD-WAN. We just transferred his IPs over there in a few seconds. So it really is a huge option for disaster recovery and peace of mind, and particularly when you don't want those IPs to change when you change carriers, change locations, change circuits. But you can bring your own firewall. Uh, we can do a managed firewall. It's a SonicWall firewall. SonicWall is no longer part of Dell, and they're just developing like crazy ever since they've been cut loose. A lot of great, great stuff. Uh, multiple scanning engines now, not just one. Uh, they're doing VM X-ray, they're doing last line, they're doing a whole bunch of different scanning engines all in one for the same low price you've always loved them for. Um, and then when we sell it, we not only have the unified threat management, and this is what customers were doing two, three years ago. You know, I'm scanning for web traffic, I'm, you know, filtering web traffic and malware and network level antivirus. That's, that's good, but that's not enough. We add two other components, DPI SSL for encrypted traffic and Capture ATP, which does the, the zero-day threats as a sandbox. It's the only way, according to NSS Labs, to get to 100%. We could also put one in our data center. We call that network-based sonic wall firewall. Um, if a customer, by the way, has a sonic wall already, you can get us the serial number and we can run it same day and take over management of that sonic wall. It will tell us if the hardware needs to be upgraded, uh, but then we'll definitely be upgrading the, uh, the firmware and the software and everything else and then managing that for the customer. And there's different price points for whether you get an on-premise one network-based in our data center or if we're taking over an existing piece of hardware that the customer has. So there's a price break for that. Um, you can also do a centralized firewall, as we mentioned earlier, at your headquarters of data center. Um, it, we play well with others. So option five, you know, if you want to use Zscaler, I think they went IPO a few weeks ago. They're a cloud-based firewall. Many others will follow. We'll, we'll integrate with them as well. And then last but not least, there is an integrated onboard Palo Alto firewall that will run on box with the, uh, with the VeloCloud CP. Uh, you'll need a V-Series CP to do that, so it does require an upgrade for existing customers. Um, but that's a wonderful option to have. Uh, you'll see a lot of this happening in the future as edge computing becomes more popular, and there is capacity on these edge boxes, which they're really starting to be called universal CPE in order to run uh, different appliances, starting with firewalls, but eventually you'll see Internet of Things and other virtual machines or VNFs running on there. Now, another use case scenario, which I did mention earlier, was single line enhancement. So um, it really doesn't take much for the wheels to fall off the bus of any type of traffic. You know, when, when we were pounding this away in the lab, I was, you know, getting crazy with 10, 15, 20 percent packet loss. To be really honest, um, you know, voice wants 1 percent packet loss or less, but at 2 percent and above, uh, everything just goes down the drain. So at 2% packet loss, we ran a voice call, and you, you rate voice quality uh, of calls by mean opinion score or MOS score on a scale of 1 to 5, and you want that to be 4 or above. At 2% pack packet loss, it was 2.1. Uh, very choppy, hard to hear the other party. We turn on SD-WAN, it immediately goes to perfect clarity at 4.1 MOS score, and still 2% packet loss is occurring. 
Okay, but the box again is dealing, it's mitigating those negative network conditions and actually doing uh, packet duplication of things to deal with it. And so what you'll see, and this is actually a screenshot here at the bottom from the VillaCloud Orchestrator, which we give you free access to. It is amazing. And because of that, a lot of my competitors, they know it's amazing, they want to charge for it. We do not charge for this. This is free. And we'll get to some of our differentiators later in this deck. Uh, but it'll literally take a circuit that's a 2.9 and turn it into a 9.6. Um, so really, you're looking at a circuit that was basically uh, unusable, um, certainly for any high-end applications like voice or video or anything else, and turn it into something that really looks like a great circuit. So it, it is a night and day difference. Now, another popular use case we're seeing is the use of um, interim failover and aggregation of LTE connectivity. So if you just want to get up on day one, you know, I had a customer, we rolled out 100 sites of SD-WAN, and they ordered one MPLS circuit, one Internet circuit, and then they ordered LTE. Um, you know, basically, they got up on the LTE day one, and then while they waited for the Internet and the MPLS circuits to come in. While they were up on that with SD-WAN, they were running 30 to 40 IP phones uh, over that connection. So they were in business. And it's very important to them because they have to put up sites all over the world very, very quickly. Um, the second scenario is, you know, whether you've got SD-WAN or not, you know, even if you have a product, whether it's voice or data, and it's got one of our routers, we can have that failover to 4G as well. Um, and then last but not least, you know, people with 4G, they say, well, you know, it, it doesn't have enough speed uh, for me. And so we're able to aggregate as many of those as you want and create one big pipe with SD-WAN because it will take each one of those 4G links and just, you know, aggregate them, which is one of those features we talked about earlier. So now you can get a huge pipe. You can run voice over it. Uh, it really does what you need to do. And, and when the connectivity comes in, like in the case of the customer, the Internet and the MPLS, they don't get rid of this. I mean, you can rent it from us monthly, okay? But they keep it. It's tertiary failover. And it really comes in handy, again, when the fires, the hurricanes, a lot of these other conditions break out. They're really glad they have it. Guy with a backhoe shows up. They're online. Everybody else is down. Another thing I've seen which is quite useful is what I call the middle of nowhere package. Um, you know, basically, you, you have no options for connectivity. We actually sold this to a guy. He's in a swamp in the middle of, of Louisiana. Okay, so I said, look, here's what you need to do. For the data, go get satellite. You know, they got Viasat, Exceed, a lot of these, these uh, packages out there now with unlimited for business, uh, download and upload. Get that. That'll be good enough for your email, your web surfing, but it's 600 milliseconds of latency. It's horrible for running voice. So for that, go get our Mobile Max package, which is 120 gigs for $445 a month. Now that's huge because as you guys know, 10 gigs on hotspot LTE data these days from any of the four carriers is $100 a month for 10 gigs. So you're getting 120 gigs for 445 bucks. Now how quickly are you going to burn through 120 gigs? Well, if you ran it at one megabit per second, you could go 286 hours like that before you'd run out. But let's assume you're doing eight hour days and nonstop you're running one megabit per second. You're going to last you know, longer than the month. And, you know, roughly 1, 1 1.5 megabits per second is about 24 calls. Uh, so you could run a whole office, have your phone calls, have your data, and be in the middle of nowhere with this package. So, and then what SD-WAN is going to do is increase the quality over the LTE so that you can run voice. Um, you know, it can't do anything about latency on satellite. It doesn't correct latency, it just corrects jitter, right? Can't, can't change physics, can't change the speed of light over glass or the electrical signal over copper. But you can do... Uh, plenty of stuff about lost packets, jitter, out of sequence, all that other stuff. So this is what I call the middle of nowhere package. Uh, definitely gaining ground. We can also do international deployments. Just so you know, we can do international quotes, particularly for internet circuits, uh, other circuits uh, as well in uh, 200 plus countries. So it takes about 7 to 14 days to turn those quotes around. It has to go through our special pricing team, but it can be done. Um, today, if you order SD-WAN and you want to, you know, you have a customer with overseas locations, we'll ship it to their U.S. location and then they will ship it to their overseas location. It's a lot faster for them to do it than for us to do it with customs and freight forwarding and all that involved. Um, but it is something that we allow uh, and then we'll add that to the portal and they'll have connectivity. And again, with SD-WAN, a lot of these endpoints go, um, you know, between each other, full mesh. So once they're in, um, they'll use the Internet and all these other connections, MPLS, whatever they got. Uh, to get from site A to site B and figure out the topology on their own and greatly enhance uh, those connections. However, uh, we are about to launch a global SD-WAN offering worldwide uh, where basically instead of just having to peer you know, from site to site to site over the Internet with SD-WAN, you can actually go to a local gateway in that country 
and then get backhauled on a 10 to 100 gig network uh, that, that's global and has almost no jitter and packet loss. In fact, the last 30 days in the test bed between LA, Shanghai, and Manila, we've seen no packet loss and no jitter. Uh, so this will get launched shortly. Very exciting option, but you know, again, you know, pick Airspring because we're the guys who, frankly, have configured it all, do it all, and we'll offer it uh, worldwide here soon. And that gets down to, you know, why would you want to use us? Well, we're the multi-location experts. When you want to have your choice of all these carriers, all these technologies, all these vendors, but you only want to deal with one channel team, generate one quote, and our quote tool is real-time to all the carriers, just so you know, as an API goes out, pulls the real-time quotes. You see the whole list of what's in there, and you also get a green dot next to the circuits. If you don't have a, uh, you know, basically a quote spring account, which is our tool today, you can get one as an agent or sub-agent. Just ask for it. They'll hook you up. But you get a green dot next to the, the circuits that are most likely to be on that uh, or there's connectivity already in the building for that carrier. So when you're doing those time is of the essence quotes, it can help. There's no guarantees in telecom, but it does help because it gives you an indicator that, yeah, there's already some connectivity there, and they're very likely to get it there quickly. But you get one quote, one network, one support, and one bill, and that's really huge. You don't want to waste time, particularly with these broadband vendors. When you add them into your SD-WAN mix, the, the last thing you want you and your customer doing is being on hold with those guys for three hours. Um, complete waste of time. Um, we do offer the latest and greatest solutions. We have our eye, you know, we use VeloCloud. We have a little bit of Mushroom in some of our deployments. Uh, we've got our eye on three or four other vendors. We may add those to the mix later. The great thing is with AirSpring, with AirSpring Unified Connectivity, if we add other vendors in the future, and I'm sure we will, uh, you can actually do a deployment where you've got multiple vendors and they're still all tied together. Nobody else would be able to do that for you. So come what may, as acquisitions happen, obviously VMware bought VeloCloud, so now it's the VMware NSX SD-WAN. Uh, is the official name of the product now. Uh, it's really not going to impact you, so we're definitely a partner where if you make that investment, you do deployments with us, and then technology or vendors change, you know, and something becomes really popular in the market, um, you're not stuck. You're not on an island. You can continue forward uh, very easily with us because we have all the choices and really none of the penalties. And we kind of boil it down. You know, we use the top shelf vendors. Those are the ones we typically have our eye on, uh, as well as some of the upcoming ones in different design scenarios. Any of these guys could be useful. Um, the guys at the bottom, uh, the reason why I call them limited is, you know, they do have some neat features, but depending on what you're trying to do, but they don't do single line enhancement, for example. They don't do anything about packet loss on a single circuit. Uh, a lot of those guys will just shift traffic to another circuit, and that means you're kind of wasting, you know, uh, bandwidth that you could otherwise, you know, improve on a particular circuit and get some use out of it. So we typically stick with those top shelf vendors. Uh, the revenue certainly backs up our choices. Uh, because those guys are doing uh, the most as far as, you know, the market share is concerned. And at this point, SD-WAN is a mature technology. It's been deployed in multiple countries around the world, and millions of units have shipped. Um, here at AirSpring, it's literally flying off the shelves. So if you're not the guy closing those $94,000 a month uh, MRC SD-WAN deals, you need to be. The differentiators we have versus, you know, there are 50 carriers who have signed up with OCloud, now VMware, to sell uh, this SD-WAN solution. You'll find our pricing is phenomenally lower by about 40 to 60 percent. We also don't limit, you know, really the number of WAN links you're going to put into the box. A lot of guys would say it has to be two links, it has to be internet. In some cases, the carrier said it had to be their links. Uh, we don't limit you to that either. And we'll do free trouble ticket management of customer-provided internet links with an LOA. That's huge. Again, you don't want to be on hold with those broadband providers for three hours a day. Uh, we'll do the international deployments. We're going to have a global SD-WAN offering to augment that even further. And the portal is free. All of our portals are free, AirCare, AirNMS, and the uh, Air SD wan portal as well. And then if you want read-write access, you can get it. You know, we, we got to give you the, uh, you know, a little bit of the speech because you could get yourself in trouble there. Um, but the reality is we're the only carrier who can do that. And you know how it is when you're trying to sell this. You'll get that super technical guy, and he's kind of like, uh, do I do it myself or do I go with your managed service? So they don't want to be pinned into a managed service where they can't see things and they can't do things. Um, but honestly, most customers don't want read-write anyway, even the really technical ones. They like the plausible deniability. They like calling us, telling us to do it. But they want all the visibility, and they want to be able to uh, have a very robust offering. That's what we bring to the table. Also, we'll prioritize uh, not only our traffic automatically, but any other traffic that the customer wants prioritized or deprioritized, which is a cool feature as well, you know, for bulk traffic, uh, backups and restores will do that. Cloud connectivity, we're the kings. we got many ways to slice and dice it. Uh, to get you connected to your favorite cloud or SaaS provider or Colo anywhere in the world. 
Um, and we have a 100% success rate with SD-WAN deployments. Again, we've done so many deployments, frankly, that VMware has given us command line access to the box to do deep troubleshooting. Uh, we've added four new features to the roadmap this year in 2018. I've got a great relationship with their architect, Craig Connors. They have a great team. We have a great team, and they trust us. And that's because we got a track record of success. I know a lot of SD-WAN uh, you know, deployments with other carriers that have gone wrong. Um, I've even had really large customers who decided to go the do-it-yourself route and are now back asking us to do it because they're in over their heads. Um, it's not a, a super simple technology, although it is easy to deploy once, you know, everything's easy once you know how, right? So we've done wireless, we've done LTE, we've done microwave, we've done uh, our MPLS, we've done third-party MPLS, we've done internet. We've done it all, uh, bottom line. So we've got a great team to do that, a lot of people on staff uh, to help. Pricing-wise, you can't beat it. Uh, $55 a month cleaning the hardware. Get it while it lasts. I mean, VMware is known for raising prices. Get in on it now. Uh, deploy a thousand sites with this thing quickly. You'll make a lot of money, and the prices are great, including the hardware. Hardware breaks, we replace it. Um, and you pay for the license you need. In the past, and we're kind of pioneers in the industry in this regard, even the other guys who signed with Velo don't have this. The reality is that you get a 100 meg circuit, and you only want to pay for 10 megs to protect the voice. You don't care about the rest of the traffic. Then you pay the $55. But if you want to enhance all the traffic, and there is a huge value to enhancing your cloud traffic, maybe all your internet traffic as well, then you could get the 100 meg license. Or you can get all the way up to a gig license, whatever you need. But the point is we have flex licensing where you pay for the traffic you want to enhance, which is called in-tunnel, and you don't pay for the traffic you don't, which is out of tunnel. Um, you know, you'll show up somewhere and re be replacing a Cisco router, and a guy's got a one gig link between a building he can see out his window. It doesn't have any issues. He doesn't want to pay a license for that. And in the past, all SD-WAN vendors made you pay a license for all traffic that went in and out of the box and symmetrically. So even if you had a 100 meg circuit, you paid a 200 meg license. It was insane. And that's why you were paying, even on a small site, 150 to $200 extra a month. Great technology, but it wasn't affordable, but it now is. So definitely cash in on that. The portal is wonderful. You can see all the way down to application level. I think because there's an a, a programming API or application program interface for this, you'll see applications in the future, uh, you know, talking about popular use cases. I think this will be used for security. It'll be used for visibility. You know, it's not just the portal. If someone could write a program and tap into all this data, including when circuits go up and down. Um, I was talking to one of our master agencies last week, and one whole half of their company is all about auditing telecom circuits. And so if they were to write an application that taps into this API and they've got SD-WAN deployed to all their customers, they would actually know when a circuit goes down and then be able to apply for an SLA credit uh, from that particular carrier automatically. You, know, you could create an automated system. So there's a lot of potential as far as applications, if you wrap your mind around SD-WAN, where you could go next. And we give you the tools to do that. Um, and again, it has an application engine that identifies 2,500 applications right out of the box day one. Um, so it knows what YouTube is and Citrix and all these different, you know, Facebook and all these applications. And you can do things to manipulate them, route them, backhaul them, uh, whatever you want to do. Very, very cool features. And if you get, you know, higher level access or even read-write, you can do things like Wireshark packet captures. You can see the route table, the flow table, the ARP table, the interfaces, everything that you want to see. Again, we're the only carrier who's offering that kind of visibility to uh, Velo Cloud, which is a great product. But you, you got to get into it, right? You got to see it. So we don't have any limitations there. Um, I'll open up now for any questions. If you hit uh, star six, you can unmute yourself and then we'll take questions. Um, if not, then uh, stick around because we've got a free pass for ChannelCon in Washington, D.C., which is going to kick off uh, July through first week of August. I'm going to be there. So if you want to meet uh, myself and some of the Airspring team, definitely get that free code. Uh, Chris Abbott will introduce that to you after we take any questions you may have. Uh, and we can meet you guys in person. Or if you contact our sales organization, you're interested in us doing the World of Airspring or some of the other presentations to take you through all the uh, offerings that we have, we'd love to come out and see you.